Hi, this is Dr. Sue Cooper with the lecture video for County 300 at Towson University. In this video, we're going to be looking at the chapter one lecture notes, page two. Before I get into page two, I want to take a look back at page one at the end of the last uh, video. We, may we were talking about the six elements of an AIS. There's uh, people, procedures, data, software, hardware, and internal controls. We're going to start, we're going to go through each of these six elements uh, for the rest of the notes. And we're going to start with people. So at the stop, at the top of page two, you'll see AIS element number one, people. Who uses AIS and how? Okay, so I've uh, broken this down in this model uh, by a differentiation between financial uh, information systems and managerial. So financial accounting versus managerial accounting. And uh, the difference between these two is gap and non-gap, right? So if you're doing financial accounting, you uh, we learn to follow gap. And the reason why that matters is because there is mandatory information that must be um, provided by, well, I just can't get a good view of this, can I? Mandatory information, I'm sorry, <clears throat> financial accounting has mandatory information that must be provided for the gap accounting. So when we're doing our general ledger, our trial balance, all these financial statements, when we're doing our re revenue and collecting our cash and recording our sales, when we're producing inventory, when we are paying our bills, all those have um, specific instructions of things that need to be reported in our financial statements according to GAAP and our tax filings. So this is some information that absolutely must be provided by an AIS. So any AIS that doesn't provide this mandatory information for the financial accounting users is not going to be sufficient. On the other side, the managerial accounting side, we've got a little bit more leeway in our reporting. The only one that's maybe a little different is the HR system. They have some mandatory reporting there as well related to payroll, but we could maybe plot that. Oh, I put payroll over here in the expenditure. So I guess that's fine because that has some specific mandatory information to be reported. But on the on the managerial side of the business, uh, the reports that we get are customizable based on our personal information, our personal uh, needs and uh, situations. So we call this kind of reporting discretionary. So mandatory is a word that means that it has to be done in a specific way. And it has, the system has to process the information properly and correctly to give us the information that is mandatory. Discretionary means that we have some leeway or some options uh, into how we want the reports to look and the information that we want the reports to provide. So discretionary information systems users have don't have as strict of rules of what needs to be reported. And if they don't get exactly what they asked for, it's not going to trigger fines and penalties from a regulatory uh, government. Okay. okay, the next element is procedures. So up here back on page one, we've got people, procedures, data, software. So now we're, we did people, now we're doing procedures. So this is from the book. This is a very simple information system. Uh, one thing I want to show you how to do is how to capture... Um, screenshots on a PC. I, I'm sure if you have a Mac that you know how to do it, but on a PC, we can capture screenshots using the snipping tool. So I have the snipping tool down here on my taskbar, but if you go into your search and find snipping tool, uh, then it brings up this box. If I click new, then it kind of whites out the screen and I can grab a screen grab of what I want and it'll put it into this box. Uh, when I've got it in the box, then I can make, you know, edits and draw things on it. I don't have a touch screen on the computer I'm using, so I did that with my mouse. But I can then copy this and take it into a Word document or somewhere else and I can paste it. So I do control V and it pastes my screenshot into the Word document. So this is a screenshot of a diagram that was in the textbook. And when I was on the textbook website in Connect, I did a screen grab to get this. Uh, you can use a similar process to get screenshots for when you have a question and you wanna send me uh, some more information about what you're working on in an email. So if I say, please send me a screenshot, uh, you don't have to get your phone out and take a photo, though some students have done that and you can. Um, but a better way would be to use the SNP tool 
or the screenshot in your MacBook to send me uh, a picture of what the problem is that you're working on. All right, let's go back to the content here. So we have input, that's data that's coming into the system. And we're gonna use our computers to process that data. Now, I think we should also be putting some, oh, I thought that would draw. I guess it's not drawing today. There it is. I think we should also be able to put some of our data input into storage directly. Um, it doesn't always necessarily have to go into processing first. So we could store our data until we're ready to process it and then it can go down here into processing. And I think that once it's processed, it can also, maybe I'll put it on the other side. I think it could also go back up into storage. Um, and then once it's processed, once we've recorded all the transactions and everything, we can store it before it needs to go to output. So I think that we could maybe add a couple of extra arrows on this model of a really super basic accounting information system. Um, most systems are much more complicated than this, but on a very high level, you have input coming in, you're using the computer to process it, and then you store it, and then you put out the reports. Now, the important thing with the output is that you need to make sure it's um, useful for decision-making. If your output isn't useful, then there's no point in putting out the information. Okay, that is the end of page two. In the next video, we will look at page three.